Right guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about first time driving in the US and car rental. Um, obviously it's quite a daunting experience if you're a first time driver um, in a new country, driving on the other side of the road if you're from the UK. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the details and what we've done in our experiences so far. Um, so we picked the car up, this is the car we've actually picked, which is a Ford Edge. Um, it doesn't look absolutely, it doesn't look massive, but this is like classed as an SUV. Um, and it's got a massive boot space, which I'll show you in a little minute. So we picked it up from Alamo. Um, we picked this up from Alamo and we paid it beforehand so that it was easy enough for us to pick up. And um, we got to the airport, which is on side A at um, Orlando International Airport. Um, and then you obviously you can pick up your sun pass as well. That's obviously if you're going through the tolls, it's ideal to pay for the sun pass. It's right next to the actual Alamo um, car rental place uh, at the bottom floor on side A at the airport. Um, so you pay for that. It's only about eight dollars, but obviously then you pass through the tolls. You can just keep driving through. You put your details into the app. So it's probably a good idea to download the app beforehand um, so that you can um, just be more plane sailing through um, the airport I guess so download that app it's like uh, Florida uh, holiday pass or something I think the, the app is called and just set up yourself an account they'll tell you how to do that there if you don't uh, do it beforehand anyway um, but obviously it's a good idea to do that then you obviously go to whatever car hire firm that you chose which we chose Alamo because it had the best um, sort of reviews at the time and then pick the type of car that you want online um, we picked an SUV because it, it holds about four, uh, five um, suitcases, which I'll show you at the minute. Let's have a look at the boot space. Um, so if you lift it up, you can see the boot space is absolutely massive. We fit in four huge suitcases plus carry-on luggage um, and a few other bags besides inside this space. It is absolutely huge. And when you pick up your car, a good idea maybe to take some pictures and videos all around just for any flaws and um, stuff. So you see some of the things here in the floods here, some of this rubber ceiling is all kind of falling out. And they just need to tuck it back in again. But yeah, there's a few things like that. Just a, uh, These cars certainly go through a lot of wear and tear through the year because a lot of people are obviously using them for traveling. But it's, it's actually quite a nice car. We had a choice of a few. You get a choice, it's a walk through. Um, to the Alamo sort of section and you get a choice of a few different cars just take your pick the, the keys are usually on the dash um, so you can take your pick if it doesn't fit you can try another one um, but if you've got a bigger family you might want to go up a bit to like, the minivans for example but if you're just traveling two of you you might want to choose something even smaller obviously it depends what your budget is and your costs um, and obviously if you're just staying on site at Disney driving probably isn't a really good choice it doesn't make a lot of sense but if you're going further afield it probably makes a lot of sense to hire a car um, for your trip because we were obviously traveling we went to kennedy space center on the first day um, and we definitely needed to drive a car unless you want to maybe get a bus out there or an uber which probably does make a lot of sense and um, so what i'm going to do i'm going to jump in the car we'll talk a little bit more about the roads um, and obviously getting used to the car and things as well Okay guys, so we're in the car, I'll go through some of the uh, instruments, but we picked this up from a company in UK, I think it was uh, Florida Discount Car or something, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, we emailed a guy called Andy, who um, obviously sorted it all out for us, we got, got the best possible deal that we could for our, um, the car that we were looking for. Um, and they also cover all the different insurances, breakdown cover and all that kind of thing. So just be aware of that. He covers that. Um, the Alamo company will probably try and sell you all these things as well. Um, but you don't need them. Um, everything from this firm is already covered. So you just need to go through that and you will be absolutely fine. Now something else probably worth talking about is coming out of the airport. The probably the most daunting thing um, at first is getting used to the car. Um, just need to be aware that most of the cars are automatic so if you've not driven an automatic car before it might be quite an, a daunting experience but it is quite straightforward um, but at first it can be strange for me it was just trying to get used to the braking rather than the automatic car I had actually drove an automatic car fairly recently for the first time which kind of helped so if you, you have the opportunity to do that before you travel it would be really helpful because um, it can be quite daunting driving an automatic for the first time. It is straightforward, but it can be a bit strange. I just found it a bit weird getting used to the brakes at first, because um, obviously 
we're on a different side of the car so usually we'd be sitting on this side but now we're obviously sitting on the left hand side and you're driving on the right hand side of the road um yeah so this is something we picked up this is the um obviously the toll pass or the holiday pass can't remember what they actually call it so you just get this and you hang it on um your let's say rear view mirror here and then that that'll basically bill your credit card um once you've finished your stay you hand that back in and it'll bill all the the tolls that you've been through i don't think it's too expensive for the tolls but otherwise the the firm that you got the car high through would probably end up billing you um separately and it probably cost you a heck of a lot more um so definitely something to be wary of um when you get there right let's have a look at the actual car um so obviously this is an automatic you see to start it you obviously hold down your two you've got your brake and your um accelerator they're just two buttons so just hold down the the brake and press the start button and that will start you up um and obviously it's quite daunting when you start um you've also got sometimes you'll have all the the details here you can sort out your air conditioning through here sometimes it might be on the 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 um sort of dash here but a lot of these cars are quite modern you can sort out your air conditioning which is going to be the most important thing i guess when you get there because it is so warm you won't want to sort that air conditioning out right away and there's a few different things here look i think there's heated seats to move the seats and um, but i think the only thing you'll be interested in when you get in is the air con where is it turn it on immediately because it is so warm the other thing i was trying to like move the seats there are some um sort of maneuvers here one goes forward one puts this the back seat back and there's nothing under here i was looking down here to actually pull the seat forward but there was nothing there and um, so yeah and most of the things are quite straightforward the left one is indicator and the the right one here i've got is for um sort of your back screen window wipers and front screen window wipers and um, which you will need if you're driving in the torrential downpours we landed in the first night and i was really tired and it was a torrential downpour which was very very scary and even the fastest windscreen wiper setting did not clear the rain from the windscreen it was so scary we we're only driving about 10 miles per hour all the traffic does slow down um Honestly, if you can plan ahead and you see something like that coming, I would pull off to the side of the road and stop and wait it out because it is horrible. It is one of the most daunting, horrible, scary experiences you'll ever have. So if you see it coming, just plan ahead. Otherwise, driving is actually all right. Apart from our first night experience, which was kind of scary, driving is okay. Once you get used to being on the wrong side of the road, um, it's fine. Um, just need to remember you can turn right on a red light. Um, and otherwise it might say up the top no turning on right on red or something so it might say that but otherwise you can turn on a red light to the right um, if it is clear to do so um, but yeah once you get used to it just plan ahead plan your route ahead when you're coming out of the airport now when i came out the airport and um, we were heading to international drive that is the north exit as you're coming out the airport um which is the 528 um, if you're going to Disney World, you would take the south exit. Um, it's basically at left for south, right for uh, north. And um, you would take the, the slightly different exits. At Disney World is left, it's just a different motorway. It's very straight road. It doesn't matter where you're going from there. It's a straight road. It is very simple for us. It was about 25 minute drive, 20 minutes at, at best. Um, <clears throat> it was still quite daunting and quite scary. It was, it was getting dark as well. Um, so that obviously doesn't help your experience. Uh, but the second day we drove to Kennedy Space Centre and I was pretty relaxed but then we even went to Cocoa Beach and I was pretty comfortable with the car and even the roads as well. Uh, but something uh, I got uh, as well was a, a sat-nav from the company that we got the, the booking through in the UK. Basically it's a sat-nav, they sent this um, in the post to us and obviously we just connect it to here. There's nowhere else to really stick it apart from on the screen and this is ideal they have all the latest settings on here for you because most of these devices don't have sat nav maps on them uh, for some reason that's like an extra charge but we got that here and it's very very helpful indeed you can obviously use google maps if you've got your phone with you but that is so helpful to actually use on your journey anyway let's have a like, quick look at the car so obviously you've got your lights a lot of these are set to automatic when i got in it wasn't it was set to over here but this is as you can see it's set to automatic lights so it'll just come on and off when it, you need it um, a lot of other things are automatic in some of the cars some are not um, so you need to maybe keep that in mind um, with it being an automatic you can see here you've got a few settings sometimes these cars have the 
um, automatic assist thing which is basically helps you when you're um, sort of braking when you're stopped it sort of stops the car from rolling back kind of thing this is basically your handbrake so when you stop um, at the lights it's probably best to just press this um, and that will be your handbrake so at the moment we're obviously parked you can see there's a few different settings I don't even use uh, neutral I don't even know what <laughs> what that's for to be honest never really figured that out but when you're parked have it on park that's it and just make sure your handbrake is up sometimes it's all done a bit automatically for you so you just need to have a little bit of play with it but um, when you're reversing obviously move it round one to reverse so obviously you need to press the brake button down to maneuver this so you press that round it goes to reverse and then you can see here you've got your um, camera that will help you when you're reversing which is really helpful if you've got a modern car you're probably used to this type of thing anyway so if you want to go drive you obviously turn it all the way around to drive and then you're good to go now obviously the parking brake is on you don't even need to touch that all you would need to do is press the accelerator button and it'll automatically go and take off without you having to bother with the brake if you're approaching a, a junction or the lights just um, obviously brake leave it in drive all I do is put the, the handbrake on and then take your foot off the brake and it'll just sit there till you press the accelerator button and it'll automatically go for you and then if you obviously parked put it back to park stop press the button to actually go and that's really it, it is so simple um, obviously at the moment we got a full tank of petrol we're now about half tank when you go to fill up it's usually probably regular you just go in uh, you don't fill up you actually have to go in and pay for the fuel uh, first and um, just say maybe forty dollars on pump five or something um, regular um, and they'll obviously put that and you can then go and fill up your car um, that's you pretty simple pretty straightforward um, and that's really it there's nothing else to really say um, there's a lot of obviously different things here you've got your radio and other sort of things here your hazard warning lights and stuff but that's basically it is handing the car back basically just leave it here as soon as you come into the airport so maybe just give it a one so we'll show any flaws that are there and the car I've seen Alamo service was really good anyway that's it just left as soon as you come into the rental car return remember keep left when you come in 
just leave it, leave the keys on the dash. So, car has been dropped off, that was pretty straightforward enough. Just remember if you've got a sun pass thing, take that off and you need to dump it. Um, or leave that back in the terminal somewhere, then you'll get charged for all the sort of term, um, sort of passes you went through, all the tolls you sort of go through. Hopefully it's not going to be too much. But on petrol wise, I don't think, out of three weeks only spent about $100 max on petrol, which is surprisingly not a lot. And hopefully I've covered a little bit that might help you drive in the US and feel a bit more comfortable. Just remember, drive in the right, take your time, just concentrate. A lot, there's a lot of impatient drivers, just like anywhere else really. They might peep you, they'll probably drive up your pipe. <laughs> um, just pull into the side, let them pass kind of thing. But once you get used to it, it's actually fine. I was on my, my first full day and we were already fine. I think half the, the battle was really just getting used to the actual car itself and getting used to the sort of brakes and how the actual functions work on the automatic car. But other than that, it was really straightforward. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope this is helpful for you. Um, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.